Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake K. Tag, and today we're back at again with the best gold lightning deck that all of the top pro players have been using for the past few metas. This is the all around best golem deck in Clash Royale right now because if you're able to build up a massive push with Golem Night Witch and you consistently get chip damage with the death damage on your opponent's tower, all you have to do is like lightning cycle a couple times and you win the game. On offense, there's nothing more satisfying than raging up your entire push with the Lumberjack and then cycling another one so it attacks and moves even faster. If you play against a balloon deck or any type of air deck in general, you've got the Baby Dragon, Mega Minion, Night Witch, and the Tornado, so you're gonna have ample air answers. No matter what deck I'm playing against, I never feel like this Golem deck really has a bad matchup. So let's go jump straight into some games and assert some dominance. And a huge shout out to all of you guys that are using credit code SIRTAG in any Supercell game. All money made from credit code SIRTAG goes directly back into improving the channel. It allows me to upload on a consistent basis while taking full-time college courses, upgrade my camera, microphone, editing, you name it, we've been able to make it happen and I can't thank you guys enough. All right, guys, we got a game against Carl the Legend. He's a professional Lava Hound player. So we need to focus up and play our best. I wonder if he's gonna play Lava Hound in the Grand Challenge. Kind of crazy that we're playing against him. He's typically top 10 in the world at every single point. So what are we going to do? When we've got gold, we don't want to cycle anything, especially against a really good player. We want to focus up, play our best, wait until 102, then cycle our gold and make a huge push. 102 allows us to build a much bigger push because double Lutzer hits. Ah, he's going to go in for a hog rider. Okay. He wasn't really about the life of letting me build up my massive push. He doesn't want parade pushes on his tower. So... It's difficult for us to go in for the Golem for the most part, but when he cycles a Hog Rider, he's going to have to cycle three more cards after cycling the Knight, four cards in total, to get back to a Hog Rider, apply opposite lane aggression. So that's why I felt very comfortable cycling my Golem there. Most times you don't do that, but with this specific matchup, in this circumstance where they don't have their win condition in cycle to punish you, you can make a big play with your Golem. So probably going to be Hog Rider Earthquake. I can go for a Baby Dragon here if I want to. Yeah, so here's the issue with him. He's going to be good enough to drop his Musketeer. So I want to finish that off as quickly as possible. So then the Night Witch Bats are going to be able to potentially swarm him, bait out more Elixir, bait out more small spells. And I'm not going to go and overcommit because Carl is a really good player. Okay. So I'm going to go in for a Hog Rider counter with Tornado. And we're going to activate King Tower without taking a single hit with a Hog. If you don't know, now you know. That's the play, guys. That was, that was pretty filthy. Uh, I learned that. Sometimes I mess it up, but... Uh, I'm getting way better at not messing that up. Okay, we can bar barrel to try to get some chip damage. Hog Rider's out of cycle, so we can go for our Golem again. So it's going to take him another four cards to get back. Three cards now. So we'll see what Carl wants to do. He's going to be two cards away, and he's back to it after one more. So he might Hog Rider. Maybe just Knights. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. Yeah, he could have just baited it out with a Knight. That would have been really smart. And then he's going to be able to... He did spend more Elixir. He spent four Elixir, and then he drops Bond Tower. So I guess it's not the best thing for him. But it still is a decent play. We're just going to pull it directly to the King Tower every single time so he never gets a hit. Eventually, we aren't all able One, to do two, that. But for three. right now, it's great. Also, that Lightning on top of the Knight and the Musketeer. Sublime stuff, guys. We're playing this absolutely flawlessly right now. I cannot say that we would have changed anything. Maybe, just maybe, we can get some damage with this Baby Dragon and the Lumberjack. But Carl is playing super well, too. I would say that we have a matchup advantage the later this game goes. That's kind of what I'm hoping for to have happen. So, I'm going to Bar Barrel here. I need to be able to finish off the Musketeer. It should. And then we can go in for a Golem in front of our Night Witch. We're just going to go in for another Tornado. I think I messed up the placement there. So, yeah, one more tile lower would have been better because he's going to get two hits, but it's fine. Right now, I'm going to go for the Lightning on the Bomb Tower, so then we get the Golem directly going towards the tower, because I want Death Damage on him. I need it, actually. I don't even want it. I need it. So he's going to log. Well played, Carl. Well played. Usually, I go in for the uh, Lightning on the Musketeer, but I try to get extra damage there. I got greedy. I got greedy, my dudes. So I think we Bard Barrel, just to finish off the Musketeer, so then it doesn't uh, kill our Night Witch. Can I go him in front? Oh, no! Why did I do that? I'm going to lose now off that, guys. There's no chance. Carl's going to be too good because the Musketeer's going to stay inside. Yeah. Really, really well played, Carl. You know, sometimes we make misplays. This is one of those times, especially against a top 10 player. It's going to be tough, man. We're going to Lumberjack here. He's going to get a couple hits. Can Bard Barrel? Maybe Rage everything up. I'm going to try to make a massive push. It usually doesn't work, but... Maybe we can pull the Musketeer to the opposite lane. Bye-bye! 
Get the baby dragon on top with the mega minion? No way. No way, Carl. Please let me win this game. No way. It's going to happen. That tornado. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Crazy game. I made a couple misplays, but we bounced back and we beat one of the best players in the entire world. If you guys don't know Carl, let's just show you his profile. Yeah, 700 in the world right now, but he hasn't pushed up in a while. 17 in the world finish, and yeah, look at this guy. He is an absolute beast. Probably one of the best players that I've played against in, like, months. Yeah, really good win for us there. We're going to out of good luck here. We're going to see what's up. We're going to see what's happening, and this guy is not dropping anything. He's going to go for bats now. So when I see bats, it might be a balloon deck. Might be a fast cycle deck with wall breakers. Oh, there they are. Okay, so we want to just go a tornado so we don't take any damage. So I really want to activate King Tower with the wall breakers, but I don't know if he's going to let me do that later on in the game. If you guys haven't done that before, it is so satisfying because not many people know that interaction. We'll see if we can make it work. So Lumberjack's going to be able to destroy that knight. And I can go Golem in the back because I think we're up quite a bit. Knight's out of cycle. So I can go for a bar barrel on top of the wall breakers. Oh, he might go minor. No, if he doesn't, we just bar barrel. Yeah, yeah, this is amazing. So we shut it all down for two elixir. We stop his bats, his skeletons, and his wall breakers. He's just dedicated way too much. And now, because he doesn't have wall breakers, he can't apply opposite lane aggression. I guess he could go for a minor, but what is that going to do for you, my dude? We can go for a baby dragon instead of going for a mega minion. Mega minion has higher damage per second, but the baby dragon's a resilient boy. He is going to make sure that he can devour the hunter from a distance and uh, allow our offensive pit potential to be higher, for sure. So I could Tornado. Rather not, though. I think we're okay. I could also Lightning. I think that's an overcommitment. We're going to do enough damage to the tower that I won't have to worry about it. So I can Mega Me in the back. And then we can go Tornado these to the King. At least one of them. Hey! Flashback. So I really want to activate King Tower with the Wall Breakers. Let's go. So if you're able to activate King Tower with the Wall Breakers, it feels very satisfying. Can probably go in for a golem in the back. Or I can just go bar barrel because it's a minute left. I kind of want to just play safe, right? If we're playing against a control deck and our golem deck is kind of control, where we've got so many small spells like tornado and bar barrel, splash damage with baby dragon and night witch bats, which are kind of like splash damage because you have so many of them, right? It's crazy. I don't think that he's going to be able to take our tower at 1,700. But if we were at 1,000 or 800, I would have started my golem in the back. Yo, he's gonna give me lightning. Let's go. It's tasty. No way he gave me that. That was a snack. That was scrumptious. And I appreciate your delectable hunter, my dude. So another thing that I really like doing is going in for a tornado plus bar barrel when he's dropping a ton of spam because the wall breakers die to that. And then also the bats will fall too. So as I said before, very important just to cycle your baby dragons because uh, yeah, it's gonna kill all the bait cards he drops. I'm going to Lumberjack here. Make sure that we just cycle back to a Tornado. With the Baby Dragon Splash, he's not going to get a hit. And then we Lightning him out and assert the dominance. My dude. GG and well played. Very fun game to play against you. And I enjoy beating these Wall Breakers players because not many people know that you can activate King Tower with the Wall Breakers. They're always like, oh, I have to wait for the Miner. You don't have to activate King Tower with the Miner. You can deny damage from the Wall Breakers connecting and activate King Tower from that. And there is no better feeling in Clash Royale than that satisfying interaction. We're sauce out of good luck here. We're going to see what's up. We're going to see what's happening. And this man is not dropping anything. He's going to go for a snowball. As soon as I say, they're not dropping anything. They always drop something. I need to stop doing that. I need to stop trolling, guys. So we want a Mega Minion here so we can shut that down with no hits whatsoever. Because he doesn't have Snowball and Cycle. Because he already dropped it. He's going to have to cycle three more cards. So he can't do anything about that. I want to go and cycle Lumberjack. Because if we look at our card order, Golem wasn't in my hand. Okay, we can definitely want a tornado so we can kill the musketeer. I need you over here. Pull it right into danger zone, into the territory of utter destruction, and annihilate him. So, I think that this is going to be one of those matchups that I am very favored in. I've got tornado, I've got mega minion, I've got lumberjack to rage up all the night witch bats. I don't think that there's a chance that he's going to win this if I have enough elixir to defend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Baby Dragon. I'm not going to go in for a Golem because I don't have Mega Minion in hand. Because he could cycle back to a Balloon and he could wreck me. I don't want to have a party on my tower. I'm not about that life, dude. So I think Lightning is going to be really too aggressive for us. If he goes in for a Mega... We'll just Mega Minion off his lane if he goes in for a Balloon. But if he wants to go in the same lane, completely fine doing this. So we'll have Night Witch Bats and we'll have the Mega Minion shutting that down. 
I don't think that he gets a hit. And then we can go for Lumberjack with the Rage Stuff, Mega Minion, and Night Witch Bats. This is going to be crazy stuff, dude. Okay, that was a really good Ice Cone pull, dude. But still, you, you have to deal with it because we're in this weird territory that neither tower was shooting it. And the Night Witch Bats are still alive. He doesn't have Ice Cone because he can't cycle back to it. And we just take the tower. So you guys are looking at this firsthand, right? Very important to not go in for your Golem. If I had went in for the Golem, he would have ballooned me. I wouldn't have had a counter in hand and I would have lost. So when you want to defend, you got to make sure that you can cycle back to the cards that are important. I'm going to go in for a Tornado here. He's definitely going to be able to get a hit, I believe. Maybe not. Maybe the Baby Dragon just defies all logic and shuts it down. Baby Dragon, let's go, Aragon! But when we are together, it is our enemies who should be afraid. Oh, man. But what do we call the, the all of the different dragons? We always call Baby Dragon Aragon. Game of Thrones. Uh, I, I forgot her name. Darren... Daenerys? Daenerys? Tar Targaryen? Yeah, I think that the Electro Wizard has got to be one of those, right? Anyway, we need an undead dragon or something like that. That's that's what we need. Oh, wait! No, we have the Skelts dragons! Wait, we have the Game of Thrones dragons! Every single one of them! What am I talking about? We can fulfill the prophecy! I need to make a deck on that. I need to upload that. It's going to be such a dank meme. GG, well played and peace out, brother. We are getting innovation from wins and... I just love Clash Royale, man. I'm having too much fun playing this game. So we got a game here. We're going to sauce out a good luck and we're going to see what's up. What does this man have cooking for us? Unfortunately, we don't have the golem. So if he goes golem in the back first play and we don't have our golem, we're in a really bad spot. Fortunately, he's got bats and he doesn't show any reason for him to golem. There's no way that you got golem plus bats, right? You're going to have ice golem. So I can go in for a night witch golem push. And look, guys, the night witch is going to stay behind the golem. She will not trespass ahead. So how are we going to win this? Right into a hunter. That doesn't look very promising for me. I don't want to spend more elixir than I need to. Ice golem bats. Oh, no. They're all going to die. Wait, why would you zap that? They were going right onto the ice golem. Sir, I feel like you made a horrible miscalculation, but we'll take it. So I can go in for a Baby Dragon in the back. We can go in for a Lumberjack here so the Mega Knight doesn't jump. And we're going to time that as well as possible. Okay, so I need to Tornado this back. I can't Tornado the King Tower because it was in the safe spot. And even if it wasn't in the safe spot, I wouldn't have wanted to because then the bats would have just wrecked my tower. So we're up quite a bit. And despite him going in for dual lane aggression, you know, it didn't work out for him. He tried to spread us thin. He tried to wreck us. But the Night Witch Golem push... That's where the parade push happens, man. That's where we actually do our value. So doesn't really matter what happens in these other interactions. These meaningless, futile endeavors for you, sir. I can just wait. Going for a golem in front of our Night Witch when I have enough elixir. And we'll shut that down without a single hit on the tower. You're going to get death damage, but that's it. So in double elixir, I'll be able to afford the golem. Not able to when he does that. All right. So I'm going to go for baby dragon behind my king. In case he wants to go off his lane, the baby dragon will still be really close and I can go kite units into it for that reason. Okay, we're on a Lumberjack here. Don't think the Barbaro kills the Hunter. It's going to be really close though. Hunter is going to die in one hit now. And the Barbaro is going to tank for the Lumberjack. So maybe the Lumberjack gets a hit. Ooh, I'm really wondering if I should go for a Golem here. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to activate King Tower with the... Uh... No, I can't because we know he's just going to go in for bats right after if I did. So I'm going to Mega Minion instead. I'm going to shut down the balloon. It won't get a hit. And then I can go for a Night Witch. And here we go. So I can Lightning the Hunter. He's probably going to go for Mega Knight plus Hunter. If he goes for Bats with that, we'll respond. Otherwise, we just want to save our Elixir. Okay. Actually, yeah, I need to. I need a 20 away. I was like, wait, do I need to or do I not need to? I'm going to go for Barb Burl and I'm going to be able to finish off the Hunter. Lumberjack, Night Witch, Bats, and Baby Dragon. You can't stop this. And the best thing about it is the Golem Death Damage does everything. You guys want damage? Just rely on the golem death damage. That's all you need to do. You get it to the tower twice, and then you lightning with some support units chipping in. Just getting, like, one or two baby dragon hits, and eventually you'll walk away with the W. But as you guys can see, just going for your mega minions on their balloon. You don't have to drop anything else. You net a plus two elixir trade. You support your golem push in the opposite lane, and you gradually overwhelm them because they never have buildings, and they can't pull something to the middle and stop the golem death damage. So GG and well played. Let's move on to the next one and let's keep asserting dominance. 
What I saw us out of good luck here. We're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see what's happening. This guy's gonna go for a log, so we're gonna go for a barred barrel. Try to get two hits, and that does way more than your measly log, sir. So when I see ice golem and log, I'm thinking that it might be expo. Oh, he's gonna hog rider. Let's go, guys. Go and activate King Tower right now. Shut down that hog rider without a single hit. If you guys do that timing, you can defend the virginity to the maximum degree. So his hog rider is out of cycle. So what do we do here? We're going for our golem because he can't punish us. You can't go for a hog rider because we already activated King Tower. It takes so long for you to get back. Are you really gonna try to do this to us? Are you really gonna try to do that? We can Lumberjack on top of the Hog Rider still. And then Night Witch Golem on the left-hand lane. You're going to have to respond to the Lumberjack and the Night Witch Golem push. And you're not going to have any Elixir or an Ice Golem to kite. You just lost. There is no way you defend this, my dude. If you find a way, I would just be mystified. Completely and utterly perplexed. So the Night Witch Bats are going to put in work. I can go in for a Baby Dragon because the Night Witch Bats should get on top of the, uh, the, night, the, the Musketeer too and just swarm his tower. Like, really... You can't do that. You can't go in for a hog rider in that interaction because the lumberjack is going to give us value in the right. And then our big push on the left is going to do way more than your hog rider will. So if he tries to go for a hog here, we can just go in for a bar barrel. Go and pull everything back and finish it all off, man. I probably shouldn't have pulled the back. I should have just pulled the hog directly to my tower. But, you know, that was something that we don't talk about. We forgive you. When we make misplays, we remember the really good pull, guys. We remember the pull that we actually activated King Tower and took zero damage from. I don't know why I didn't do that again, but we now know you don't do that, guys. You definitely don't do what I just did. I'm going to Lumberjack right on top of the Musketeer. What are you doing? Your Musketeer Ice Golem being on offense? I think that his craziness was amplified by my horrible decision to go and try to go pull the Hog Rider right into the Bar Barrel. I don't know what was wrong with me there, but we don't talk about that one. So we can tornado and pull the musketeer right into our night witch and our baby dragon and our bar barrel so then even if the golem explodes it's just gonna finish it off right there's no way for you to defend the insurmountable aggression is wrecking andres's tower and probably gonna wreck his phone you know like 2.6 has a great matchup in most situations when your opponent doesn't have mini pekka especially early on we got a disastrous amount of damage early on guys his elixir is depleted and he has no resources to amount any aggression that's going to be meaningful. So I can bar barrel. We can go tornado back. For the memes now, we can actually tornado back and have it work. And maybe we go golem in the pocket. But overall, guys, very fun matchup. As you guys can see, if your opponent doesn't have hog rider at the start and you defend with a tornado, they can't go in for another hog rider push. So you're generally free to start your golem in the back because they have to cycle four more cards. And if they do cycle four more cards, it's going to cost them too much elixir. And then they, they're just going to be too depleted to make any good defense.